everybody and welcome to a brand new episode here on Homeworld Farm. So as you can see we're getting the International Combine out today and uh, we've got one field of contract canola to do and then uh, that should be the end of uh, the majority of contracting that we do. I can't wait until uh, we have enough regular work or even another tractor um, to be able to uh, take on an employer uh, or an employee I should say but uh, anyway we'll make our way over to the field just got to go through Homeworld Estate um, like I say we rent that little uh, yard there and then uh, if we uh, it, when we uh, get to a point that we can uh, afford it we can then um, use the dairy and the fields that go with it down this end of the the yard but um, it's over there the sun is very hazy this morning um, but yeah you can just about make out the silhouette of the uh, of the dairy so that's the uh, the uh, <clears throat> the plan for today we're going to say we're going to do this field of canola and find out where they want it tipping um, we'll get rid of that and then uh, we we then have another 82 is a ploughing contract um, it's not a very big field to be fair 82 and again it's just round where we're going it's, it's just round the corner from there so once we get um, the harvesting in that field finished obviously we'll bring the harvester back we'll go and empty the rain we'll then take the trailer back and then we'll have to look at getting a plow uh, in actual fact as you can see I've been contracting continuously since the last episode <laughs> um, <coughs> It's uh, it's been uh, it's been really fun, but really sort of long uh, with this combine. But um, then it's not all co uh, combine and contracts to be fair. Um, quite a few of the money as well, or quite a bit of the money I should say, has come from um, fertilising. There's been quite a lot of um, fertilising contracts, and so we've done them. Um, and then some of them, some of it is is combining, combining as well. I can't say any words. So <coughs> it's looking, uh, it's looking very good. And as I say, we'll we'll soon be picking up and and starting to to move forward. Um, I want to get that dairy up and running. I want to get that dairy up and running. There's trees in there uh, that uh, I want to uh, that I want to uh, get rid of, um, and uh, we, you know, clear a bit of space. And then not only have we got a a field for the cows to to graze, but we'll also um, have a field to cut for for um, hay and silage and things. Um, the field that you get with Home Wild Estate, I want to immediately turn that over to farming because I think, if I'm correct, it's a grass field. I did sort of have a walk up there um, just to have a look around and to sort of see what I'm going to need and, and, and what have you. And uh, as I say, for now, I think that's what uh, the money's going to probably be going on the money's going to be going on um, on getting the dairy up and running as soon as we get the dairy up and running we then look to get the sheep up and running um, at the same time we'll hopefully be slowly building up our contracting and uh, because I've had to take on fields really that were not huge huge because with this combine it would just take too long. This combine has a very small grain tank, uh, which obviously is perfectly realistic. I'm, you know, I'm not saying, um, I'm suggesting that it's not, but 
it does mean it takes a very long time. <laughs> so it's kind of been a case of, okay, let's pick and choose our contracts here. Uh, fertilizing wise I've been able to do them all because we've got that Amazon spreader it's a 42 meter spreader and uh, yeah we've been able to uh, to do all of the fertilizing contracts and so that is where the vast majority of the money has come from um, and then we've had a few fields of um, harvesting contracts as well uh, one which you saw in episode one or two Two maybe. Um, right, let's lift the reel up. Right, let's uh, get set up. Let's move that down to six. Move that up one, and then start. Not bad. Right, we're away. So as I said, we just got this uh, little bit of uh, contracting to do, and then uh, on this field, and then we uh, we still can't drop the straw at the moment because we still haven't got a baler. The plan at the moment is is that I'm not going to buy anything brand new because the cost of the dairy and the equipment and everything that I'll need to set that up is where the money's going to go so if I am going to be picking up new machinery then we are going to have to rely on the second hand market um, so you know at the moment we're not going to be buying anything um, brand new or anything uh, super special because uh, as I say we need the money for other things, other projects uh, I'd like to as well at some point buy a log splitter um, just because as I say there are trees in uh, the uh, cow field that I'd like to get rid of um, and there are a few other trees as well the biggest issue I've got with the trees is that wow this combine doesn't like hills and this isn't a big hill either wow this isn't even a big hill. Why are you not moving? Okay, what's happened? <laughs> surely can't be the weight of the uh, grain tank because there's hardly anything in it. Let's see whether this is a problem or whether it is just the hill. So there is a hill here but it's only very slight. But I'm very surprised if this combine is struggling that badly with the hill. We now need to sort of kind of run along and uh, ooh, hang on don't go on there that's someone's crop what is that grass yeah uh, it's Emily's grass she's a uh, she's a good girl Emily she runs uh, well her and her dad run uh, a farm uh, not too far away from uh, where uh, our farm is based let's have a look that's a bit better get back in cab just as we can see let's go back this side yeah so it's just the hill crikey and as I say that's not the steepest hill by a long way on the on the farm so yes um, <laughs> the regrets of this combine <laughs> grow further each day I think it's fairly fair to say uh, but one thing that uh, does bug me is the uh, very small grain tank Number two, what bugs me is the fact that it can't handle a slight hill. So that's uh, that's not good, and that's a bummer, really, because I didn't, I really didn't want to have to be looking at a combine for a few years. Um, the field that we we actually own, actually, 
that comes a part of the, of the estate that we've taken over. I think that is relatively flat. But this combine really is struggling with this. Oh, there we go, I'll turn the header off. Maybe it's the header that's causing the combine to struggle. I mean, it's the header that came with the combine, so I don't really see why it should make the combine struggle. But, um... Do the header. We're up and running again now, so we will uh, wait and see when we get back in the cab again. So, yeah, I uh, I have to admit I can't wait for this uh, save game to uh, to start taking off. Um, you know, getting the cows getting the sheep, eventually the pigs and the horses, the chickens, um, yeah, obviously everything's going to take a while because everything, you know, costs money, but land on this uh, particular map, I've uh, played about with the prices and made it very expensive, um, just, just so as it makes it more of a challenge and makes it that, um, you know, in the end we have to farm properly sort of thing uh, to achieve the you know the most amount of money that we can now I'm a bit concerned going around the second time because obviously we're gonna have to face that hill again uh, I'm not sure how well uh, the combine's gonna cope with that hill I knew a local farmer to me when I was growing up had an international combine and um, because being you know into farming and being into all of this sort of stuff I uh, used to regularly speak to them and uh, ask them about the combine and uh, the farmer that uh, owned this combine basically said to me that uh, the combine when he bought it it seemed a great idea it was a big upgrade from what he had um, but it quickly became a nightmare and this is going to be a problem because we cannot combine like this oh dear well, let's have a look in the second hand machinery see what's available what well, we've got a sprayer well we are going to need a sprayer we've got a seed drill we've just bought a f uh, well we've got a four meter um, ooh, what one did we buy? Sulky. Bought a 4 meter Sulky. So, hmm. Alright, I don't know what to do. Do I hire a combine? is if I hire the combine the money it's going to cost me to hire the combine is going to wipe out the money I was going to make for the contract how much money are we actually going to make with this contract because it might be a case of um, I have to ring Emily and say uh, I'm sorry love my combine's not able to uh, <laughs> to finish your contract 3630 okay Let's have a little look. <laughs> well, that's all of the contract money gone straight away. With that combine, so... Yeah. I think it's going to have to be a case of, I mean you could use that I guess, how big's the head of 6 meter? Hmm. You pressed the wrong one, oh, that's going to be even more, because I mean that's only 70,000 to buy and I've lost it now, I can't find it. <laughs> 
it's only 70,000 to buy. I might be having to buy a new combine already. And I really didn't want to be doing that. Um, that actually leaves me with a bit of a dilemma. I don't know what to do. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave the combining for a second. I'm going to go and look for a plough. And I'm going to have to buy that one because I, I do need a plow, um, you know, for my field as well as as, as contracting. Um, as for the combine, uh, I'm just going to leave that here. Biggest issue I've got is the tractor is all the way over there, and I don't like tabbing. Um, I'll see you in a minute, people. <laughs> it's going to be a long walk back. Hello, buddy. I'm back again. Right, decided <clears throat> after the walk back, I was about to record me just arriving. And I thought, no, because I've then got a long drive to get the plough. I might as well go and get the plough. And then uh, you can join me when I get back to the field. So that's what I've done because um, this map is pretty big and. Uh, things do take a, a moment or two to get around so uh, that's what I decided to do. Right we'll get on and plough this field and uh, we'll uh, need to think about the uh, the combine situation really because uh, as I say that really has ruined slash thrown my plans completely out of the window um, because uh, as I say I wasn't planning on buying a combine for a few years mainly because I was going to stop doing contract combining I was then going to uh, <clears throat> just use the combine that we had to do our field so we've only got one field and then when we started building up land and fields um, we were getting sort of to the point where we were requiring a bigger combine ourselves I was then going to get a bigger combine sort of save up spend a bit of money get a bigger combine and then we could go back to doing combine contracts as well as our own combining but um, that has now gone out of the window that was my sort of plan for that my, my sort of immediate plan was to use the money that we've been earning to To uh, get the the dairy, as I say, up and running, and to also get the uh, bits of uh, equipment that we needed. But any sort of farming equipment that we needed, i.e., for either for contracting or for ourselves, I'm hoping to buy second hand, which we are going to be relying on the game giving me those second hand uh, options. But um, all right. But that, that was my uh, sort of long term, or that was my, my aim and my goal. So it hasn't been really the best of starts because, see I mean the combine did, the two other combining contracts that I did, I think it was two, maybe three. Uh, I think it was three plus that one which was four. Um, it handled those ones fine, I didn't have that issue. So whether it is just that field or whether I, I don't know um, right this is a straight edge and the other bit is not Ooh, I've got it. <laughs> yes. I, was, I was looking at my plow then and didn't realize that I drew oh now I've driven the plow through the blooming edge um, oh dear what a wally Right, we'll just plow that off and now we'll we'll start to, when we come back the reason I plow like that is I used to do this in real life so basically that now means that when we come the other way 
to do the headland, we won't have to fiddle about in the corners treading everything down that we've already done, because in theory the corner will have already been done. So as we drive in, as soon as the plough meets the plough in, we can lift the plough up um, and then uh, and go from there. Uh, that, that's the theory, at least, anyway. Uh, but uh, this wasn't the world's straightest edge that I found here. <clears throat> so that's more than enough that side. It won't take long to plough this field, but I've ploughed it a bit skew whiff. Uh, I'm not very happy with that. Oh dear, that is awful. I'm not very happy with that at all, but there we go. I've done it now. I should have started the other side. That looks a straighter edge. Uh, Got to be honest that when I looked quickly down, as we came in, when I looked quickly down that uh, edge of that field, that looked fairly straight. So it just shows that my eyes are wonky. <laughs> I'm wonky-eyed. <laughs> a wonky-eyed plower. Um, there is there is a way you can plow yourself out of this situation actually. In real life, you could do it with not having to sort of do anything too drastic. Uh, so basically, what you would do is is so you would look at the fact that this end has obviously far exceeded the other end so you would come to the to the inside of here so you would you would sort of just go into your ploughing a little bit you would drop the plough down and then plough it and always remember you're steering the plough not the tractor so you then keep the plough out and keep now the plough on the outside as far as you can on that uh, unploughed bit and just keep doing that up and down and eventually what will happen is as long as you keep turning in the right place eventually what will happen is your ploughing will straighten up it's very hard to do on farming simulator and the reason it's hard to do is because when you're at this end and you're ploughing you're basically turning your wheels almost against the furrow wall and trying to get the tractor to sort of almost climb out without it climbing out because so then you're going to start missing and you're going to start making like an even worse mess of it but you're kind of getting the tractor to climb that furrow wall um, and push it out and then as soon as you get to here see once the plow is level with the level plowing then turn you don't turn the tractor you know you have to remember when you're sort of plowing you're you're driving the plow not the tractor because if you're driving the tractor the plow is only going to follow what your tractor does so take the tractor out of the equation and let the plow do the work um, and uh, to be fair that already looks a little bit better I think I think that already look oh, hang on a minute no, 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 no. we've gone a little bit too so we need to be over this side we need to be over almost getting that first furrow to miss so that that first furrow isn't doing anything and then once your plough reaches the point where the ploughing turns now so you're still following the line you're still following the line of the ploughing I mean it's not it, it's not going to matter too much because we've now got a, a disappearing sort of side there so it's not going to matter too much but we'll uh, ignore the fact that we should perhaps go down the side there for a little bit but as you can see the ploughing is gradually coming out even on farming simulator where you can't fight the furrow wall because that's that's what you're aiming to do you're you're aiming to fight that wall um so yeah again we'll come right out and then when the plow reaches the straight bit which is there and then we again get that first furrow to miss so we're just ploughing with the back four for us. The track's bouncing all over the place. You get that, uh, as I say, that first furrow. You must keep that out of the ploughing. You don't want that in. That first furrow is being steered by the link arms. Now on the link arms, so where that bar is, you'll have a bar that side, the other side, if this mod is ultra realistic it should be a chain and it's not it's a bar it doesn't really make no difference you take the bar out or extend the bar probably 
or take it out completely and then what that would do is, is that would allow the plough then to be on um, what they call draft so the plough you can then sort of try and keep the plough will try and keep straight while the tractor's sort of moving over a little bit it's hard to sort of explain without having a tractor and plough in front of me so I could actually show you what it would do because if you lift the plough up with that and then try and move it if that bar that I showed you is there you shouldn't in theory be able to wobble that plough you shouldn't have the strength but you take that bar away and you should be able to wobble that plough from side to side easy with you you know just with your own strength but um and then that makes it even easier then for straightening up because I mean now what you could possibly do actually is you could be very very naughty and hope that your boss doesn't come and look at the ploughing <laughs> and just takes your word for the fact that you've done it right but you could do this <laughs> and then quickly go back and how you would do this is again I can't sort of simulate it on farming sim so I can't show you because uh, farming sim doesn't have the capabilities but you would then go back try and keep off that ploughing as much as you can right and then you would go here now what's going to happen is you put the plough down now it's normal depth say you're ploughing at 8 inches you're going to get an 8 inch furrow running through what you've already ploughed and people are going to know what you've done so the secret here is and this is how I can't do it in uh, in farming simulator is you drop the plough when you drop the plough you drop the plough down completely and then on your draft linkage, there'll be a, 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 a in the John Deere. It's where the um, you lift the um, arms up and down. If you lift the back cover up, there's a draft link in there. If you turn that up, which is connected to your arms, if you turn that up and keep going and keep going until you start to see the plough lift up, what you can do is, in actual fact, you would have the plough that way. And you would go into the furrow this side because it needs to look the same this side so this now the back furrow is on this side obviously the opposite side but it will now catch that and then plow through and um, but you would have that now so it's just lightly to it's, it's turning the soil over enough that it's plowed and that you would have a seabed but it's not doing it deep enough that it leaves a huge trench or uh, you know for it um, and that's that's how you would uh, do that and then when you turn round you pray to God you've kept it straight this time and yes we've pretty much kept oh, I was right the first time yep yeah, we've pretty much kept it straight so that that's how you would sort it out but doing it the other way the first way that I showed you if, as long as there wasn't this bit where you've then got to sort of come through and it leaves an L if the field was just straight through up and down all the way across you could straighten it out that way um, but that's how you would do it at the end where your bend is you're ploughing out against the wall and then the end or the section or whatever because you can get like so as it's sectioned but the opposite end to that bend you want to be ploughing so that your front furrow is not actually ploughing the ground at all um, you know it's hanging over in the furrow and not doing anything and then let the f the uh, back four furrows do all the work and then that way you'll you'll um, you'll very quickly recover it to a straight line um, and then when you're in the cab a way to sort of know that you're always going straight without having to sort of panic is line your bonnet up the corner of your bonnet with the furrow and as long as your bonnet stays in that furrow you'll know you, you know you're absolutely fine um, and that's a that's a quick reference point that is and the same with your power harrowing if you power harrowing with a four to five meter power harrow just line your the outside of your mud guard up with um, the line between what hasn't been done and what has been done and uh, it's a quick reference point and you will then know that you're a n not overlapping too far but you're not missing anything um, and that you're going perfectly well it doesn't guarantee you're going perfectly straight because that depends on how you drive but um, it does give you the not missing not missing anything and not overlapping because obviously you know overlapping is a big no-no um, 
because it's wasting time, fuel and money and everything else. But yeah, so... Anyway, we'll get this ploughed and then uh, we will uh, go off and have a look at... I, I guess, I suppose, the thing with the combine is, is that if we do trade it in, we will get the money for the combine. Because obviously we'll, you know, we'll trade the combine in. We won't keep the combine. Um, so I wanted to use that combine just because it was something a bit different and it's not something I would normally use. Um, and that's kind of why I chose it, but I can't have it struggling with hills because this is one of the hilliest maps there is. <laughs> There's the, the section where the estate is, that's fairly flat, but once you get this end um, and then going that way, I mean, you can basically see it's very hilly, it's very steep, and that combine is not going to cope with that. Um, so we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to, um, to maybe rethink our strategy on that one because, uh, as I say, although that combine I'm fairly certain would cope with our field the field that we were just in is a field that it's the sort of size field that I would be interested in at the moment because our machinery is not massive we've got other things that we're prioritizing sort of over fields and machinery and so it's the sort of field that I would sort of expand to next because it's a field that um, you know our sort of smaller kit can cope with so that is gonna leave me with a bit of a conundrum that is I don't really know what I'm gonna do I mean the only other thing is is that I, I cancel the contract but I don't really want to do that because if people hear that we take contracts on and then we cancel because we don't have the kit to to fulfill that contract we're not going to get asked to do contracting um, no one's going to want us back, so um, it's, uh, it's, it's I don't know what to do. I might be better off swallowing the cost, changing the combine, and I mean that then kind of leaves you with a bit of a question of okay, so do you now go too big too soon, and you really don't have to change the combine for a very long time? Or do you still go and try and go with a relatively small-ish combine? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think by Tuesday's uh, episode we will we will have an answer. Um, but we'll plow this field and then uh, we'll leave the uh, episode there. And uh, as I say, we uh, we need I uh, need to go and sort of and have a think about what to do with that combine because. I'm really not sure why we'll pick the plough up there, just so as we don't travel on the plough. I've turned the wrong way, really, because the plough is now going to go out the hedge. It's no good. All right, we'll turn it round. And here it's about just leaving the gauze and and just just leaving enough room to keep yourself turning round all the time, um, and then just sort of going far enough down the field. There's not much of a gauze here, so it's it's not going to be um, too bad. And all I mean by gauze is the triangle bit that you get one side of the field. You don't get them in every in, in every field, but you know just sometimes. But as I say, it's only a small gauze here. We won't uh, plow up to the end of the field. This end, um, we'll leave this end open because we'll plow it um, the other way, and then. Uh, it will then turn out right for going up this way on the headland. So I think this will be the last breed really for the gauze. Um, just as I say because there's not much of a gauze here anyway. Um, right, as well in real life, um, again you can't simulate this in farm simulator so you've just kind of got to use your imagination. So you'd walk along the field and you've obviously got the verge of the field here and the field here. Now if there was a step between the field and getting up onto here, you would plough the field from out here back this way to the headland to try and feel that step in. 
if there wasn't a step and it's fairly level, I mean, if you sort of look, let me just get my mouse uh, cursor up. If you look here, that looks kind of almost like it's simulating that it's sort of fairly level. So then what you would do is you would then. Oh, I've got that the wrong way around, sorry. <laughs> if there was a step between the field and here, you would plough the, the um, field, the headland, from the edge out into the field so that you left the open furrow this way. If it was flat and there was no step, you would then plough it from the headland into the field so that you left the step. So each each year you would go and do it the opposite. So if we were to plough from here to here this year, next year we would plough from there to here. And, and you keep turning it over. Two reasons. One is it's nice to have a border um, every other year because it, it does help with you know drainage stuff like that, um, pest control and stuff you know uh, weed and like herbicide control as well. Um, but it does also mean that the soil gets moved that way to that way and then that way and that way and it keeps the soil being moved over because on headlands you can't really go the other way you can't plow the headland that way because it you know it would be ridiculous to do it so yeah, that's how you move the soil and make sure that the soil keeps moving keeps aired and keeps um, good drainage um, obviously I mean uh, another way around it if you didn't want to go to all that trouble would be to come every year and like subsoil it and stuff like that but that would be too much you, you're far better off doing it with the plow while you're actually in the field with the plow you, you know so so this year well, as I say we'll take that that that's a bit of a step uh, sorry we'll take it that that's flat and we need a step so we'll plow it from the headland uh, we'll plow it from the plowing to the headland and I'll show you what I mean and that'll be the same all, all the way around so We'll go back to the other end of the field now, and then we'll plough that headland, and uh, and then we will uh, see uh, see where we're at. So here, so so as we get a nice neat corner, so we need to line the plough up as roughly as we can with where the um, plough hasn't uh, been, but just overlapping into where the plough has been, just so as you catch it. And another reason you would want to do that as well is is if there were tram lines in this field you would want to plough to the left of the tram lines on the headland doing it like this just so that you didn't plough along the tram line you would plough the tram line over and basically when you come to drill it that will mean that the drill has a very smooth exit out of the field rather than bumping and and being sort of thrown around and it's nicer for the driver as well um, because when I used to do the drilling they didn't always used to plough the tram lines out properly and I'd be flying down the field in my challenger with my that, and I'd come to the end of the field and I'd be thrown up and my head would be you know not quite banging against the roof and I wouldn't be sort of thrown up out of my seat but the point I'm trying to make is for the person that's ploughing it's exceptionally bumpy and uh, you don't want that because obviously then you're damaging springs and tines and and you know and stuff you know not only on your tractor but all you know on the drill as well um, so this headland probably is just about the right size for just backing up and then just driving the same way all the time. But we'll drive up to the up to the um, the hedge and then uh, we'll just fill that in. That's not too bad actually because what we're going to do is we're going to drill it. Uh, we're going to drill it. We're going to plow it from the corner out. Um, right. In theory if that works out correctly so again we'll just drop it down that should now be one more breed that should be enough for one more breed I say it's hard to sort of do on farming sim because I can't get out and walk the field and measure it to make sure that it does finish uh, right but um, it's going to be just a, and I don't think I can move this plough in and out no I can't so we're just going to have to uh, overlap a little bit unfortunately but there we go that's that one done and then again up to the hedge and then pick the plough up and then uh, we need to keep the plough that way 
and then we will looking at that actually we'd be better off ploughing from the headland out which sometimes you 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 can only do some headlands one way and one way only it's sometimes it doesn't it wouldn't pay to do it the other way and it wouldn't pay this time because I'd have too much of a an angle on it um, so that wouldn't that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't then come right with the drill um, because that's what that you know when you're ploughing you're thinking about what's coming next you know what's the next machine coming into this field and how can I sort of make you know yes I've got to plough the field but how can I make that plough in so that the next person coming in has a really easy time can be really quick can be really efficient and get in and out of that field as quick as possible so that you know the next person coming into the field you know has an easy time of it that that's that's kind of you know what the ploughman should be thinking. Uh, basically, if you if you know the field's coming arable, so like if this field maybe was coming, you know, say wheat or whatever, you're thinking about the end driver, and the end driver would be the person that's coming to drill it. And it's right, how can I make it so that the field's are nice and smooth, so that everything is top notch and ready to just be drilled straight into and there's no needing to slow down there's no needing to you know to do any of that sort of any of that stuff that then makes drilling or you know vegetable planting or whatever uh, longer um, than it needs to be but um, anyway we're going to plough this uh, I'm just going to finish off ploughing this headland um, thanks ever so much for watching if you haven't already, please don't forget to comment, like or subscribe and hit that notification bell. Then you'll get notified every time I release a video, which at the moment I am managing to keep up once a day. Um, and I'm hoping that will continue. Uh, half term is next week, so whether I'll be able to achieve that, I'm not sure. Um, but um, I will do my utmost best. And... Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this particular video was I did intend that we would do combining first and then we would do the ploughing was because this field was the ideal sort of field to show uh, well initially I was just going to show how to plough the headlands and why you would plough them a certain way but we ended up making a huge mess of the middle of the field and it became also a lesson in how to straighten ploughing out if you make a bit of a mistake um, I have to admit it was my job it was my favorite job on the farm and you know since I've had to give up work and that I really really do miss ploughing and I will sometimes on farming sim just load a map up get my tractor that I had get my plough that I had because they're both in the game and I will just sit and plough a field and kind of sort of remember how good life used to be. Um, but because I, I love ploughing, I, I just think it's it's such a relaxing job. Um, and if you do it right, it's such an easy job as well that you can just sit and have fun and just relax and chill out. I used to have my little TV in my tractor, and uh, as I say, once you got the ploughing sorted and you're straight. And every you know, and you're set up properly. I could just sit there and watch my TV while I was ploughing, and it was lovely. I really thoroughly enjoyed ploughing. Um, but anyway, that's enough for this episode. Thanks ever so much for watching. Thank you for all your continued support on not only this series but also Britain's Farm. It really does mean a lot. I can't believe that we're at the number of subscribers now that we're at. I think it's incredible. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks ever so much. Bye-bye now.